Ladies and gentlemen, hello, my name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon. I have a significant interest and expertise in the treatment of gliomas of the brain and spinal cord. And it's a pleasure for me to discuss with you the information this, that the patients need to know for management of the gliomas. Just to start, what is a glioma? A gliomas originate from the brain or spinal cord. In other words, they're primary brain tumors. They originate primarily within the brain and this can spread to the brain, but they typically do not spread from the brain to the other parts of the body. This is in contrast to metastatic tumors that originate from outside of the brain and secondarily invade the brain. Um, it is also important to know that these tumors often can have fingers or uh, very much invading character to the other parts of the brain that makes their resection quite difficult. How do we classify gliomas? Based on the World Health Organization or WHO, there are four primary classifications of gliomas. There are grade one tumors that are slow growing cells that have the highest rates of survival uh, there are grade two tumors that are relatively slow grow uh, growing cells and capable of, again, um, invading the normal brain. But again, they are not considered cancerous. Grade three tumors are actively reproducing cells that infiltrate the normal brain and unfortunately can transform after the removal sometimes to a higher grade tumor and significant, uh, significantly affect the lifespan of the patient. There are also grade four tumors. These are the brain cancer tumors that are rapidly producing. They are very much abnormally structured. They have abnormal vessels and they may form new vessels and bleed in fact, and due to their rapid growth, affect the lifespan of the patient very negatively. How do we classify gliomas? There are based on three classifications and the origin of the cells that make up the tumor. There are astrocytomas, which lead to astrocytomas or glioblastomas. There are ependymal cells that leads to ependymomas. There are oligodendrocytes that lead to oligodendrogliomas. The ependymal cells that cause ependymomas they involve cells which line the cavities holding the uh, cerebrospinal fluid or the brain fluid within the brain. They're called the ventricles, these cavities. The oligodendrocytes or oligodendrogliomas, they involve cells that code the nerves to make the signal transmission possible within the neurons. So what are the astrocytes? There are small star-shaped cells they nourish neurons, they regulate biochemical balance of the brain. There are two main types of tumors of astrocytes. There are astrocytomas and glioblastomas. Astrocytomas are the most common form of glial tumor. So what are the astrocytoma symptoms or symptoms related to gliomas? These symptoms are shared typically with all three classes of tumors and are typically headaches, nausea, vomiting, mental status changes, seizures, drowsiness, neurological deficits such as weakness and numbness in parts of the body and personality changes. Especially among the higher glade gliomas and glioblastomas, since these tumors are very infiltrative, they affect a larger portion of the brain and that can cause significant confusion and personality changes. So what are the treatments for astrocytomas? Just like other gliomas, surgery is the primary treatment. The more of the tumor you can remove effectively, the better it is. The benign tumors may only need surgery. In other words, grade one or two tumors may only need surgery. Radiation may be employed if the tumor is not removed completely or it cannot be removed at all. The higher grade gliomas, grade three and four tumors, Total resection is limited because of the finger-like projections of the tumor into the new, uh, normal brain and therefore radiation and chemotherapy is necessary and both of the latter um, uh, therapies can further 
enhance the total lifespan of the patient. What is the prognosis for these tumors? The tumor grade, the size, the location, the age, the extent of removal, and the patient's neurological status are the most important factors that define the prognosis of this tumor and the length of the lifespan of the patient. Very important is the tumor type. The higher grade tumors, the more cancerous the tumor is, unfortunately is associated with a shorter lifespan and more neurological decline. Grade one tumors, excellent prognosis. Grade two tumors are unpredictable and may progress to higher grade tumors and lead to further um, a neurological decline or require further treatment. Grade three tumors have very high risk of recurrence and many patients unfortunately can live a good number of years, but these tumors can transform to aggressive uh, tumor types such as glioblastomas. Typically grade three tumors also undergo radiation and chemotherapy. Grade four tumors or cancers they um, limit the lifespan of the patient significantly and their treatment involves surgical resection if it's deemed safe combined with radiation and chemotherapy. So what about the glioblastoma? This is really what we call the brain cancer. This is how everyone refers to a brain cancer is really as a glioblastoma. These are grade four astrocytomas. They are most common in most invasive astrocytoma. They can migrate away from the tumor and very much far into the normal brain, really precluding their gross total resection. Why is a glioblastoma difficult to treat? Again, it's because of these tentacle-like, finger-like projections into the normal brain that prevent gross total resection of these tumors. These tumors are very fast growing can really dramatically affect the lifespan of the patient and therefore any resection has to consider the lifespan of the patient. The surgery cannot lead to any deficits that would require a significant amount of time for recovery. Therefore, decision-making process can be difficult. Also, it's important to note that the glioblastomas can lead to hemorrhage and other changes within the tumor that can cause sudden neurological decline. As we discussed previously for glioblastoma, the symptoms can be headaches, seizures, nausea, vomiting, but most importantly, the confusion and personality change can be a dominant feature of these tumors that can significantly affect the quality of life of the patient and their ability to make good decisions. So. Um, the treatments for glioblastoma, again, depends on the size and location, and surgery is the first step, and uh, follows by radiation and chemotherapy. The prognosis of the glioblastoma is related to the age of the patient, tumor size, and the location of the tumor. Um, however, uh, the means survival time uh, are unfortunately relatively limited, and it's critical for every treatment modality to consider the quality of life of the patient and the adverse effects related to the treatment during the remaining lifespan of the patient. Let's talk about the other class, the major class of gliomas, and that's ependymomas. They originate, as I mentioned, from the ependymal cells. They line the cerebrospinal fluid cavities in the brain and the spinal cord. They are more common in children. They tend to arise at the base of the brain, and they travel via the CSF pathways to other parts of the brain. The symptoms are um, very similar to other gliomas, typically increased intracranial pressure or hydrocephalus when there is fluid buildup within the brain and skull and can lead to larger heads or skull in children. And in addition, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, severe headaches, irritability, problems with feeding and gait can be significant component of these uh, tumor presentation. What are the treatment options for ependymomas? Um, obviously, surgical resection is the first step. However, after surgery, sometimes these tumors can block the pathways of the uh, brain fluid flow or the CSF flow, and the patient may require a shunt 
or a tube that goes into the head, under skin, into the abdomen to permanently drain the fluid from the brain into the abdomen. Certain ependymomas may require radiation therapy and this radiation can be quite targeted and precise and often follow surgery. Chemotherapy may be used, but chemotherapy is really not a good choice and is far less effective in these types of tumors. What about prognosis for ependymomas? It depends on tumor size, grade, and location. Generally, the spinal cord ependymomas have a better prognosis uh, than brain ependymomas because we can resect those more effectively. How about the last um, major class of gliomas, and those are the oligodendrogliomas. What are oligodendrogliomas? Are, they are tumors of oligodendrocytes. They are non-neuronal cells that produce through the myelin or the coats that cover each neuron for the neuron to be able to transmit signal across the brain or different regions of the brain. They, and who gets the oligodendroglioma and uh, where are they typically found? Most often, the oligodendrogliomas occur among adult males, young adult males, and they're commonly found in the cerebral, in other words, the more outside sections of the brain that are source of, high, source of higher function and impulse control, and also um, um, those regions of the brain that define our personality. Typically, oligodendrogliomas can be a grade two or three, and grade three tumors are more malignant than grade two tumors. The symptoms are very typical of other gliomas, very often seizures, headaches, personality change, lethargy, and other focal symptoms such as weakness and numbness in parts of the body. What are the treatment options for oligodendrogliomas? First, surgical resection. Um, higher grade tumors may be difficult to remove because of those finger projections into the brain. Radio surgery, I'm sorry, radiation often, radiation often follows surgery. And chemotherapy, in fact, can be quite effective in these tumors. Unlike some of its counterparts, oligodendrogliomas can be very much responsive to chemotherapy. How about their prognosis for oligodendrogliomas? The average age of diagnosis for the patient is 35 years. The low-grade tumors are associated with survival times of 10 years or more. Unfortunately, the higher-grade tumors are closest to three years or more, and certain genetic mutations within the tumor. In other words, tumors that are missing, missing sections of chromosome 1 and 19, in other words, 1P19Q, can have better prognosis and better response to treatment. Um, in summary, the um, glial tumors are very difficult to manage. However, with appropriate therapy, the lifespan of the patient can be very positively affected. For the past 20 years, I've been involved in the surgical treatment of more than 2,000 patients with excellent outcomes, and it will be an honor and privilege to be able to help you if possible. Thank you.